the St. Louis John Doe, identified as Timon Joseph Emily. Not a whole lot was released, but we know that Timon went by the name of TJ. It appears that Timon Joseph Emily was the third generation with that name. We do know that TJ was 18 when he was last seen in St. Louis. Some reports say he went missing from Montgomery City, Missouri. But TJ's brother, Curtis, spoke to Fox 2 News in St. Louis. Curtis went on to tell the news that his brother was last seen leaving his own home on Rauschenbach Avenue in St. Louis. It was known that he was walking to his uncle's home nearby, but he never arrived. This was the last time anyone saw TJ. His brother Curtis was 12 at the time, and he described the event as horrible. His family received a call, which appears to have been from his uncle, looking for TJ to see if he had arrived there, instead of where he was expected. But he hadn't. Curtis recalls how upsetting it was to say that they hadn't seen him. A feeling of fear of the unknown would linger for the next 32 years. What happened to TJ, even now that his whereabouts are known, is a mystery. He was found on March 7, 1992, inside of an abandoned building. Workers had gone in to service a gas line, and instead they found him. The building itself had once been a business, but it was abandoned before 1992. The police believed that the young St. Louis John Doe had been there for around one to three years before he was found. It was determined that he was a victim of a stabbing, but the police had no indication who he was, why he was found there, or why somebody did what they did to him. They could tell so little, but they guessed he was around 5'8 to 5'11 and 150 pounds. Detectives received tips from the public over the years in hopes of identifying the St. Louis John Doe. But unfortunately, the people unveiled in these tips did not lead to a name, as each time they would check the dental records and it was not the person, which is just so sad. There are so many John Does out there, and so many missing persons. In 2004, authorities created a DNA profile that they hoped would lead to the answer. They went ahead and they uploaded this to CODIS, but no matches were found. It's unfortunate, though, that no one cross-checked with the missing and exploited children's database, because we do know that in 2012, he was added to that database. We owe the thanks in this identification to the DNA Doe Project, who obtained DNA and used GEDmatch and FTDNA to search for relatives. FTDNA is popping up more and more in these new identifications. So if you want to help uploading your DNA there, is also a great way to help identify John and Jane Doe's. I did that years ago, actually, but for a different reason, obviously, but it's super easy to use. It's actually far easier than GEDmatch, in my personal opinion, especially if you want to check out the results. You can download your DNA from whatever site you use, like Ancestry.com or 23andMe, and then upload it to those free sites. One cool thing about this case, though, is the DNA Doe Project was identified of the positive identification, in this case, on March 25th, 2022, the 30th anniversary of TJ's disappearance. So on that anniversary, the parents got their answer. TJ's brother disclosed that his father finally found the answer he had been searching for all that time. Though quite obviously, it's not the answer anyone wanted. It was unfortunately too late for TJ's mother to find the truth. He will soon find himself buried next to the mother who loved him so much and never stopped looking. His brother describes the situation as horrible, saying that at least the family has finally been given a rest, finally knowing what happened to TJ. Homicide detective Heather Sabin made a plea for information, saying, Knowing who he is, now we can look into the area of who he was with at that time, and what kind of activities might have led to this, or what kind of people were in the area. They desperately need some sort of information to help move forward on this case. T.J. Emily was missing for 32 years, and he was a John Doe for 30. Had he lived, he would be 50 years old today. Before the next case pops up, please, if you could take a moment and comment below. And as always, thank you guys so much for liking. It makes a huge difference. One of mine had the comments turned off by YouTube, and it had almost no views. So please, if you could take a moment and comment below. And on to the next case.
the seminal John Doe, identified as Daniel Muniz Jr. A man was found in the Styx River in Seminole, Alabama, on March 26, 2000, by a fisherman. It was an accidental drowning, and the only clues left behind were tattoos, including one of a woman in braids and the name Becky. They believed him to be either Asian or Native American, around 47 to 53. The cause of death was believed to be an accidental drowning. It turns out Daniel Muniz Jr. was living in Robertsdale, Alabama in the late 1990s, last seeing his daughter when she was 16. She had spent all the years since looking for him, until she shockingly came across the story of the seminal doe. She would later say, that's what I do with my time. I'm always looking. Even moving to Tennessee didn't stop her from looking. It was a news report that would clue her in when Amanda Geller came across the name Seminole Doe, a story about a man who had been pulled from the Styx River in March of 2000. The only clue to his identity was multiple tattoos. She went on to say, When I hit the picture of the tattoos, my heart sunk. I saw the picture of the Indian woman and her braids that popped up first. My heart sunk. I know that tattoo. And she looked and she saw more tattoos she recognized. She immediately called the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office, where she spoke with Captain Clint Caddenhead. She explained the Becky tattoo was for his first wife. She was able to give her father's driver's license number, his social security, and his date of birth. DNA has since confirmed that Amanda found her father. Daniel went unidentified for 22 years. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. We have new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Take care of yourselves and each other.